Second Call is a community-based organization that deals with individuals in the Los Angeles and surrounding communities who are disenfranchised and individuals who society disregard. In a nutshell, Second Call saves lives. We touch on things like low self-esteem, goal setting, anger, anger management, angry behaviors, depression. Once we start the process of an individual realizing where he or she might have a stumbling block, we start the process of healing. I just got out uh, 100 days ago. I did 38 years and four months in prison. I went in when I was 16. I'm 55, I'll be 56 in a minute. Um, within the last 100 days, I just hit the ground running. Just recently in a second call impact session, Gilbert was speaking about how he was taught to hate black people. And he said by coming to second call, he realized that the things that he was taught were not correct. What I was explaining here to the group was it's a type of spiritual healing in, in the sense that for 38 years, um, blacks and Mexicans in prison, I was taught to hate one another. But since I've been out of prison for the last eight months, it's been nothing but black people that have helped me along my way in terms of getting into the union. Shamori Davis, Eric Brown, Big John Harrell, it's changed perception as well as eroded a lot of the prejudices that I had. Anybody getting out of prison, first of all, they've got to have some kind of support system or it's geared for failure. It's like jumping off a merry-go-round and trying to land on your feet. For somebody that's done, you know, 20 years, 30 years, the world has changed completely. It's like stepping out onto the moon. Big John had turned around the lives of a lot of disadvantaged people and one of the things that he was big on was recruiting for Local 11. He gives you the skills to be able to function on a job site. Spirituality is actually a, a higher plane of thinking. You know what I mean? That's spirituality. So if you want to call it God, you call it whatever. We have been such takers for so long. Do you understand? Such takers. And until you become a giver, you don't have a chance. Complacency is the ultimate goal killer. Complacency will kill growth. We're talking about emotional situation, but John makes it humorous and it makes it easier to talk about because we're gonna talk about it, laugh about it, and if I keep talking and laughing about it, it no longer has power over me. When I first got into the film industry, a guy named Eddie Bunker, he did about 25 years. One of the things he says is, Danny, you have to disarm people because people in prison, everything about people in prison, we have three mindsets. In prison, you have intimidate, manipulate, or fantasize. That's it, nothing else. So I had to lose that. I literally had to say hi before anybody. If I'm somewhere and I see somebody and I think it might be a little hairy, first thing will come out, hey, how you doing, my brother? To let you know that I'm not coming in harm. And to say it with a smile, hey, how you doing, my brother? You good? Are we good? Because then that way it... I seen myself going through the same changes that Malcolm X did when I got to prison. And then I started opening up the doors. I started dealing with whites. I started dealing with Mexicans. I started seeing that uh, we all in the same boat. You know, we all in the same boat. We all dealing with the same thing. We're dealing with dysfunctional thinking. We're dealing with dis depression. We're dealing with anger. We're dealing with uh, some type of traumatic experience that happened early on in our lives. Many of those people that come through organizations like Second Call, but particularly Second Call, are compassionate, sharp, and have understandings of our community that a lot of people don't get. And they are wonderful members of Local 11, and they are productive members and employees of our contractors and that's why we try to empower and help Second Call. Marvin Crockett is way ahead of the curve when it comes to diversity and inclusion. Individuals like myself who had checkered backgrounds have given us the opportunity to feed not only myself but my family and be an actual builder and learn some things is just short of phenomenal and it's, and it's like a godsend and so in the community the IBW is respected. Community and family support is absolutely essential. Without it, I think most people actually are probably doomed. I know Gilbert didn't have a chance. I know that. I know he went to the pen when he was 16 years old, 38 years. You can have all that perseverance, but if you don't have a place to put it, you're, you're, you're gonna say, okay, well, what can I do to make some money? 
you know. So with this second call, it's like he's got an avenue. I'm so proud of that dude, man. I, I mean it. The church that I attend as a member, Abundant Life Christian Church, was the catalyst for Second Call to start classes on Thursdays eight years ago. And it's just been a, a blessing ever since. The people that are trying to help you take their advice, listen to them. They're not becoming rich helping you. They're doing it because they feel so good, man. You know, they feel so good. Uh, I've seen Danny Trejo in movies. I don't know him personally, but the fact that he understands what we're doing a second call and some of the things that he's doing, I think is phenomenal. I think the electrical union is unbelievable. You know, I mean, everybody talks about it. I know guys that are in it. And no drugs, no alcohol, and, 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 and good work ethics. Sky's the limit. You know, sky's the limit.